Are you curious about a very easy, clean and neat way to make entries to your Notion task database without having to use the clunky Notion phone app? Then I have the right solution for you. You can use Apple shortcuts as you see it here to make easily entries into your Notion database, which is very clean and very useful and very straightforward and quick to do. And I will show you now how to do that. So therefore I created a page already and I call it task example. So what we need now is a database, of course. So we create a database here, a database inline, and we have to give it a name. So I also call this tasks example. This we can hide and then we only need two properties. The text property we can delete, this we will not need. Name we rename to task. And then we need a date property because we want to assign our task a due date. And let's call it directly due date here. Okay. So that's it for our database. What we will need now is the database ID. Therefore, you open the database as page. Then you click on these three dots here and you click copy link. Then you can go back to the page. You copy this here. You hover over the link, click edit. And then what you will need is everything behind the slash here, so behind dot so slash and before the question mark. So this what stays here is your database ID. This you will need, you can just leave it here, we will need it later. What you will also need is an integration. To do this, you click on this sign here, you go to the bottom and you click settings. Then you click here my connections and then you scroll down to develop or manage integrations. You click here on new integration. You also give this a name, task example we call it. Then you have to associate it to the workspace this you can keep as it is then you save it and then you click here on configure integration settings so what you will need is this internal integration secret you can click here on show and then on copy so we will need this also later um, here please make sure that um, this secret token will not be seen by anyone because everyone who has this secret token can access your database and can modify your database. And this is of course what we will not want. So I will delete this after this video tutorial. So um, for me, it's no problem if you see this now. Okay, so after we have um, created the integration, we go again um, to our database. So we open again this S page and we have to connect it to our um, integration. So we can search for it here. Task example, confirm. Okay, so this is what we have to set up in Notion. And now we can head over to our Apple shortcuts so we open the shortcuts app, we click on the plus button here, we give this a name again, we call it tasks example as well. And then we need a text module where we paste in our secret token. So now we have to uh, set up a variable that holds the secret token and we call it just key. So what we have to do then is um, we have to set up the shortcut in the way that it asks us for the tasks. 
for the task that we want to uh, enter and also for the date. So we have to ask for some input. So we look for the ask for input module and we can give this here. So we keep this as text and we can give this here a prompt. Um, and I just type in task with a question mark. Here you don't need to set up anything else. And then we ask again for input. And this time we ask for the date. And then we enter here the prompt when is the task due. You can also make it shorter and just ask for due date. This is up to you. You can enter whatever here. Um, here you also don't need to do anything. Okay, so now we need our database ID and we need again the text module. So the shortcut needs to know which database to access. So we have to enter here the database ID. So we copy this here and we paste it in here. Okay, now we, uh, we again set up a variable that holds this database ID and we call it task database ID. Okay. So what we have to do now is to set up the permission that allows the shortcut to make changes in your database through the Notion API. To do this, we look for a module that is called get contents of URL. And this we clear and here we type HTTPS colon double slash API dot notion dot com slash V one slash databases slash and now your task database ID. Here we click on show more method is get because we want to get some information. We open the headers here. And here we type in authorization and here Vera and he. And then we need to set up the Notion version. And this is 2022 minus 06 minus 28. Okay, that's it for this part. And now we have to code a bit. So we use a JSON file where, which stores all the information that the Notion shortcut uses to operate. And therefore we can use a program that is called JSON. So we open this here, we click on new document. Then we choose dictionary. And then I recommend to click on this little symbol here that splits the screen. And then on these three dots and select show plain text. So on the left side, you will set up everything. And on the right side, the code will be displayed. Okay, so we click on this plus symbol here and we select dictionary and we call this parent and save. Then we click on this again on the plus symbol. Now text, this is correct. And then we call this database underscore ID and save. Now we go back and we click again on the plus symbol. We select dictionary and we call this properties. Save this. Now we click here. So now you see on the right side here how this code is building up. So you click again on the plus symbol. Then we select again dictionary. We call this task and save. 
you click on it again we select the plus symbol we select here array and call it title save we click on this and we select the plus symbol again we select dictionary save now this get automatically named so here you don't have to give any name this is automatically done so then you click here again you select the plus symbol select dictionary again and you type text you click on this again then the plus symbol again and now again text and content Okay, so now you can select here again properties and we need again, we need um, another property, we need the date. So we click here on plus, date is also a dictionary, we call it due date. So you have to be careful here that you name all the properties as they are named in your Notion database, otherwise it will not work. We save this here, we click here, um, we select the plus symbol again and we select again dictionary and call it date. Save. We click here again, plus symbol, now we select text and we call this start, save. What I noticed now is that uh, we have we have two properties. We have task and we have due date. And as I mentioned, you have to name the properties the same way as they are named in your Notion database. So here, tasks, we have to also name properly. And we have to use the first letter of the capital letter. Okay. So this is it, then we can copy this code, open our shortcuts app, now we need a text module again, and we enter this code here. So now you see that there are some quotation marks here that uh, where we need to fill in something here and um, database ID, we need to fill in our task database ID. So then content, the first content here is asking for the name of your task. So we click here, um, do the right click and select insert variable. And now select variable and then you can scroll up and select this module that asks for your task, which is this one here, ask for input. Then we do the same with date right click insert variable select variable and then we choose the module that asks for the date so now we have to set up the format of the date so the type here is date which is correct we get the date here is also correct and then date format you have to choose ISO 8601, which is the date format that Notion uses. So we have to select the same. Okay, and now we have to set up our last module, which is again get contents of URL. Here we clear this field again and we type in HTTP s colon double slash api dot notion dot com slash v1 slash pages then we click here on show more and now we want to make an entry into our database so we choose the method post then you open the headers here and you type in again authorization which is again Bira and our key notion version is the second one which is again 2022 minus 06 minus 28 and now we have a third one which is content type 
and here we type in application slash json and then you see here request body here we choose file and then we get to choose the file and here we select the variable and this is our text don't be confused or worried that this is now empty here it is empty I don't know why but it will always be empty when you choose text here so don't worry okay and now we can run it so we click here on play let's call this task test we choose today's date then you will be asked if you want this to connect to Notion API and you allow. Okay, and then you see down here if everything worked or if you get an error message like we did now. So we check what it would, could be the error. So it says properties should be defined instead was undefined. So let's check our code and I already found it properties has a spelling mistake so we go back to our JSON file and fix this it is proper piece like this we save it it is updated we copy it or we can just change it also here then we don't need to fill in everything again properties now it's correct and it should work let's check and now if you see something like this it worked so now we can check in our notion database let's close the program so it can update and here it is so we have our test and we have the date of today so this is how you can make quick and easy entries to your notion database using apple shortcuts and you don't even have to open the notion app you can do so from your phone quick and easy or on the desktop wherever you use notion I hope you found this tutorial useful and you like it and if so I would be very happy about a like a thumbs up or even a subscribe and then see you in the next tutorial